Hi, this is Natasha Lara Lewis from Esther's Place, and today we'll be sharing with you how to make this adorable little holiday gnome. Now, it could be done for any season of the year, um, so feel free to use different colors. It's a really wonderful early childhood project. It is wet felted, and today I'll be showing you how to create it. It's very fun, and the whole project takes about, I'd say, 30 to 40 minutes or so. Um, you could definitely stretch it out to be a little bit longer, um, but I would say about 30 to 45 minutes, and uh, I'll show you the supplies that you need. So first off, I line my tables with the towels. Then I give each student uh, a piece of bubble wrap here. Um, if you're doing it at home, um, this is a fun project to do with kids or grandkids, and uh, let's get started. So we've got our bubble wrap. We also have a cup of warm water here, and we're gonna put a little bit of soap in there. I like to use the Eucalan soap because it's a no rinse. So I'm gonna use about a teaspoon maybe. Well, let's just maybe about a drop or so in the cup. Okay, that's probably more like a half a teaspoon, sorry. I don't like to measure things even when I'm cooking. Uh, so the soap is going to give the water kind of like a little bit of a slimy feeling. And this is a no rinse soap, so we don't have to worry about rinsing it out at the end. If I'm doing a big batch, I'll usually have a tub of water and I mix about a, a good sized teaspoon with maybe a gallon or so of water and then I hand it out in the cups. All right, so we've got for our fibers, we've got a little bit of white merino. We're using the soft merino wool here and that white is going to go down first to form the back here. So we're gonna put this all on one half of our bubble wrap because we're gonna fold this over like a blanket later. So you wanna design it on one half of the bubble wrap. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to make our nose. The nose is a little bit of the flush color and you're gonna take and tie a knot in the middle. Now, if you're doing this with younger kids, I would suggest to have your noses pre-knotted. We could even tie a couple knots here. Okay, so now that I've got my little knot, I'm gonna double over the fiber and then do you see these little lines right here? We're gonna pull some fiber over to cover the lines. So it's a nice, smooth little noggin. Then we'll take a bit of fiber from the bottom here. We're not tearing it off, we're just pulling it up and wrapping it around very tightly here, right underneath so that it will hold. So there's our nose. Okay, let's set that aside for now. We'll put you over here too, little gnome. Then we're gonna take some of these curlies. Now these are these wonderful curly wool locks and they're actually from a sheep called Wensleydale sheep. They're naturally curly. That's the way they grow. We don't have this kind of sheep. We have the Cheviot sheep for needle felting wool. But we're gonna take these curlies. We're gonna put it right on top of the white beard. There we go. It doesn't matter if the curlies are a little crazy because that's kind of just the way that they are. We'll then take and put our nose at the very tippy top of the curlies. Then we've got some of our hat color. Now what I did is I pre-prepared these so that each of the kids had a little triangle. So we're going to fold this up a little bit and stretch it so we have a nice little triangular hat like that. Okay, at the very top I'm gonna gather this and we're gonna take a little bit of white wool and we're gonna wrap it around the top to make and cover this over a little bit, fold it over, cover it to make the little pom-pom at the top of the hat. There we go. And now we're gonna take that hat and we're gonna put it over on top so that the hat lines up right where the nose is. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and wet it down and we'll add our little holly detail after it's wetted down. So at this point, we're gonna take our hand, put it like a high five onto the surface and pour a little water. Pour the warm water and mush it in. Pour the warm water and mush it in. Pour and mush, 
pour and mush. It feels really nice to do this. <laughs> and as we add our water, we're going to do a little bit of shaping as well. Okay, so now that we've got it all wet and you can see how it's glossy wet here, we're gonna take and tap, 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 till the whole thing is very wet. Now, the more wool that there is, like right here, there's a lot of wool, it needs to be very wet. And we can now take and tuck our fibers in along the sides. Okay, I'm gonna give him some little curly edges to his hat. All right, so then we're gonna take and we're gonna make a little bit of holly. You could also just decorate it however you like. So I've got some green here. I'm gonna take my green, I'm gonna twist the ends, and I'm gonna bend it in the middle to make two little pieces of holly. And as you put that on top, even though it was colored, it's gonna disappear because of the water. The water always makes things look a little bit darker and kind of disappear, but you'll see it later. And then we're gonna take a little tuft of the darker red and roll that up into a little ball. And you do want your hands a little bit dry for this. And stick a little ball on there. And again, it's gonna look like it disappears because the surface is wet. Okie dokie. So now we have our beautiful little gnome ready to get covered up with a blanket. So you're gonna take your bubble wrap, cover it over, and just gently press it with your hands. Now we're gonna start out by adding a little bit of water on top, like a slip and slide, and very gently, whoop, very gently rub the surface. Now, if you're working with little kids, they have a tendency to kind of get rough, so I tell them to start with the back of their hand. Using the back of your hand helps you to get a little bit more control and not put quite so much pressure on it. So my hand is sliding and gliding along here. <clears throat> and we're gonna do this for about five minutes or so and then we'll flip it over and we'll do the other side. All right, so a good way to make the time pass is to put on some music. You can also, if you've got a few people, play musical felting where you put the music on and you rotate around the table and everybody works from one to the next to the next. And when the music stops, they have to do something else like pat it, or chop it, or windshield wiper, or snake. It makes it a little bit more fun. After your five minutes, you're gonna flip this over, put a little bit of water on the back here as well, and we're gonna rub this side. Okay, so after we've done this five minute routine on both sides, then we're gonna do our rolling and we wanna roll it from every side. So we have a rectangle and we're gonna roll it from this side, from this side, from this side, and from this side. So let's start with always the side closest to you. Okay, we're gonna roll that up and then we're gonna take it to the edge of our towel and we're gonna roll it up in the towel. I just used the towel that's on the table and you're going to gently roll to 50, one, two, forward and back, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna count in my head. And some ways to engage kids is they can count, they can roll for a set amount of music and then stop. You can read a book and roll for four pages and then stop. So I'm not pressing very hard as I'm rolling, I'm just gently rolling. And using both hands and I'm pressing this bubble wrap here. 
the bubble wrap, you might be wondering, why do you use bubble wrap? It actually provides you a little bit extra agitation because it traps the soap in the water. Okay, so we're gonna open it up and we're gonna peek inside. Sometimes it gets a little twisted up. So we just wanna make sure that everything is where we want it to be. And we're gonna close it back up, put that blanket back on top. And we're gonna roll it from alongside. Okay, roll it up, turn it, and roll in your towel. I love gnomes. I think gnomes are such a fun, playful thing. I do a lot of different things with gnomes, and I came up with this project uh, just a few weeks ago for a second grade class that was coming for a field trip. But it would just be a really fun project to make at home. Make a garland out of these that you could hang with different colors. You could make these for any time of the year. You could even make little spring ones and put flowers on their hats. So lots of different ideas. And the wet felting is nice because it doesn't require a lot of tools. Okay, so you can see every time that we roll, it's shrinking in the direction that we rolled in. Now we're gonna add a splash more of water. And we're gonna go from the top. So we're gonna go from the pom-pom down to the beard. Roll that up, always roll it up tight in the towel. Now adults are gonna put more pressure on this than kids are, so if you're an adult, we might be done after four rolls. If you're a kid, you might have to do eight times around on each side. So we're on our third time. Okay. And by now you can put a little more pressure on here as you're rolling because the fibers are starting to hold together better and we can be rougher with it. In the beginning, you have to be very gentle because the fibers are very fragile. All right, let's see, where are we? There we go. Oh, it got turned around. Pom-pom at the top. Okay. Oh, it really got turned around, whoops. <laughs> okay, pom-pom at the top, upside down. And we're gonna roll from this side, another long side. Roll that up. This is like rolling cookie dough. Okay. So all of our wool is from local farms. We actually raise our own sheep and we source fibers like this merino from farms here in the Midwest. So we dye it here at the shop and it's milled over in Michigan. So it's really nice to have all local wool from happy little sheep. And you can find all of those different fibers through our website and our Etsy store, Esther's Place on Etsy. This is the wet felting merino wool that we're using. Okay, so by now, all right, we are very nicely shrunk. You can see how much it's shrunk. It's about half, half the size at least. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna flip it over and see what we've got. There we go. So we're gonna take, and depending on how it's holding together, what you're looking for is if you pick it up and rub your fingers, the surface should feel like felt. It should be hard and stiff. It shouldn't be fuzzy at all. Everything should stick on well. Here's our nose. Because we knotted it, it actually is more dimensional. It sticks up. We're gonna do a little bit of shaping here. This one is nicely fused. I would say it's done rolling, but it's up to you how much you wanna roll it. So we're gonna take and we're gonna find a dry spot on the towel. Let's see, here's a dry spot over here. <laughs> dry spot on the towel. Roll out. I just rolled out some of that extra water. And then we can do some shaping. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna just gently pull on the hat a little bit and I'm gonna roll right here at the top of the hat before the pom-pom. Okay, 
I'm going to take the pom-pom, I'm going to floof it out a little bit. Now the pom-pom's nice and fluffy. Take my edges of my hat, pull them down a little bit, stretch it, shape it, pull it, however you like. It's pretty forgiving. And the shape in which you leave it is the shape in which it will stay. Now, if you want to have it with a little kadink like that, you can just simply take and put a clothespin right here and keep that clothespin on it until it dries. When it dries, it's gonna hold that shape and it's gonna remember the little kadink. So there we go, there's our little Nomi or a little Tompton or a little Christmas elf. Very easy to create and all we needed was a little bit of the merino wool, the Wensleydale curls, and some soap, water, and agitation. So enjoy your creation and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for joining me. I'm Natasha Lara Lewis with Esther's Place. Happy felting.